Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Every man who comes to Dodge doesn't spell trouble. But sometimes a stranger rides in who, to my eye, has it written all over him. This one I first noticed walking slowly up and down the plaza, taking every detail in of the buildings, of the crowd, of the street. You might have thought he was figuring to buy the place. But after two days of his walking and sitting and watching, I decided that maybe that wasn't exactly what he had in mind. You looking for somebody, mister? You've been in Dodge long enough, stranger. You know who I am. Marshal Dillon. If there's anything about this town you haven't found out, maybe I can help you. This is the first civilization I've seen in months, Marshal. Just trying to get used to it again. By the way, my name is Cole Yankton. Well, it ain't no summer name, Marshal, if that's what you're thinking. What do you do that keeps you away from the civilization, Yankton? Oh, I've been horse trading, around among the settlers, a few peaceful Indians. Uh-huh. But you're done with that now, huh? I sold what I had. Come out pretty good, too. You know, most men who come here with a stake spend it gambling. I haven't seen you near a saloon yet. I'll look them over later. You aiming to stay here long? I come here to take the Santa Fe to Wichita, Marshal. Well, it goes every day. You got something against me? No, not yet. You guess being a lawman, you got to be suspicious of everybody, don't you? Not everybody. There's nothing wrong with me, Marshal. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I want, Yankton. Good. I'm going to let you do the worrying. I figure this saloon's about to go broke. Oh, why is that, Kitty? Well, they've almost stopped watering the whiskey. Oh? I swear they're pouring at least half and a half these days. <laughs> uh, Kitty, Sam's got to make it last, you know. One barrel for the whole winter? <laughs> <laughs> well, the less people drink, the less trouble they make for me. Ah, oh, that's being selfish. Oh. Huh? I wondered how long he'd hold up. What? Who are you talking about? Now, the man at the door over there. He's been in town two days, and this is the first time I know he's come into a saloon. Right. Kitty, what's the matter? Nothing, Matt. Nothing. Well, you're staring at him like he was a ghost or something. A ghost? Well, what is it, Kitty? Do you know him? Um, Cole Yankton. Well, who is he? Well, what do you know about him? He's coming over here. Excuse me, Matt. No, wait a minute, Kitty. Evening, Marshal. Hello, Yankton. Uh, your girl took off. Uh-huh. She's going out the back door. She's really leaving. Yeah, it looks that way. 
Now, why'd she do that, Marshal? I wouldn't know, Yankton. You ain't even curious? I don't figure it's any of my business. Maybe you're right, Marshal. Maybe it ain't. Like I said, Yankton, you worry about it. Good night. Good night, Marshal. Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, as an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Look at him, Chester, hmm? sitting there half asleep in the sun, and crime is being committed all over town. Widows are being robbed, old men are getting the throats cut, little children are being sold into slavery, and there sits the law, sucking on a straw while he digests his dinner. <laughs> My golly, Doc, he don't look none too lively. If I had a gun, I'd shoot his heels off. I'll end your mind. <laughs> Why don't you two sit down and quit bragging? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> we better do it too, Jesse. It'll make him look less conspicuous. Mm. Ah. You know, this is one part of my job I take pleasure in, Doc. <laughs> you know something? I wouldn't hire either one of you to drive a tent peg in quicksand. Don't answer him, Chester. That's his bad conscience talking. Doc. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a man doing a little thinking once in a while? Uh, oh, he's thinking. And what would you be thinking so hard about, Marshal? Well, I'll tell you, Doc. Cole Yankton over there. Oh? That's him standing right across the street. Where? Oh, yes. Yes, I know. I saw him this morning. This morning? Where? In the plaza. He was asking where he could find Kitty. Said he wanted to talk to her. Well, now that's all right, Chester. Why shouldn't he be talking to Kitty? Well, no reason, I guess. You don't fool me, Madeline. You're wondering why as much as everybody else. Kitty knows lots of people, Doc. Oh, yes. People like Cole Yankton, outlaws. Look, look, there's Miss Kitty. She, she's going to run right into him. You stop her. I guess he's going to get to talk to her, all right. But he isn't, Chester. He's just kind of smiling at her. Well, that sure didn't last long. Where is he going now? He's taking his horse. Looks like he's leaving town, Matt. Yonder he goes. Well, that's good riddance. You can forget about him, Matt. Yeah, maybe. Why don't you ask Miss Kitty about him, Mr. Dillon? You said you was having supper with her tonight, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, Chester. I'm having supper with her. You like the enchiladas, Matt? Well, I'd like them better if I knew what they were using for meat, Kitty. 
Haven't you ever been here before? <clears throat> no, not often. Uh, yeah, for one thing, it's too long a walk. This place is hardly part of Dodge. Mm. Now, just because it's at the edge of town. I don't think you like Mexican food, Matt. <laughs> I grew up on it, Kitty. Well, the walk's good for you. Gives you an appetite. Huh? Mm-hmm. Is that why you brought me clear out here? Mm. I get tired of eating at Delmonico's in those places. Change is good for you once in a while. Yeah, sure, it's good for you. As long as it's for the better. There's nothing wrong with this food. I think it's delicious. Uh-huh. Have you tried this coffee? I wasn't talking about the coffee. Well, you take cornmeal and molasses and you fry it together until it turns to powder. And then you boil that with water and you got coffee. Is that how they make it? No, that's how they make it here. <laughs> well, I like it. Well, you don't have to, you know. It's not going to cost me much. Then you ought to be grateful I made us come here. Oh, I am, Kitty. I sure am. Matt. Yeah. You haven't asked me about Cole Yankton. No, I haven't, Kitty. Why should I? Mr. I... Dillon, I swear I thought I'd never find you. What are you doing way out here? Uh, something wrong, Chester? Only the bank got held up. Three men, they took over $10,000. When? A while ago, I've been looking everywhere for you. Was anybody hurt, Chester? Well, there was a few shots fired, but nobody got hit, I know of. What, any idea who it was? Yes, sir. One of them, anyway. Well, who? Cole Yankton. Matt. Now, we'll talk about it later, Kitty. I brought your horse, Mr. Dillon, and we better get going or we won't ever find him. All Chester knew was that Cole Yankton and his partners had headed south out of Dodge. So we started after him. We rode blind for a few hours. I was about to give it up and wait for daylight when we ran into a cowboy who'd heard him ride past him in the dark. When I told him who I was, he told me the only place in the whole country where they might be hiding. And an hour later, Chester and I were crawling on our bellies up to a half-fallen shack that lay under a small bluff. They ain't even hiding in the shack. They got a fire going outside. Might have been safe enough if it hadn't been for that cowpuncher, Chester. Yankton's the one laying on the ground, ain't he? Yeah. Quiet now. Just hold it up, Chester, and listen. Don't worry. Won't nobody find us tonight. Come on, let's get a little closer. Two of them, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. The other one's probably in the shack. Listen. How are they going to find it? You bloodhound. Well, they don't like it, I tell you. Another thing, Yankton. What were them men doing in the bank? It was always empty at that hour. Can't find out everything in two days, can I? No, I guess not. I still give you credit for one thing, Yankton. At least that tin horn marshal never showed up. Don't give me credit for it. Why, he means so kidding, Mr. Young. He means she was in on it. That gal help you out? What's her name? Her name's Kitty, and I don't want to talk about it. Hey, you talked about enough what we got to die. Well, look, the marshal was out of the way, wasn't he? That's what I said. And that's all you need to know. Now leave Kitty out of this. <laughs> You're awful touchy about it, ain't you? Yankton? You shut up or I'll put Trust a her. in you. Yes, sir. You watch for the man in the shack. I'm going to move in on these two. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, you men are covered. Get your hands up. Shoot him. I got that fellow in the door, Mr. Dillon. I gave up, Marshal. Don't shoot. Got them all but him. All right, keep your hands up, Yankton. Here, up. All right, get on your feet. No, I can't, Marshal. I'm too dizzy. What? I got hit. Marshal, I... I got him, too, I guess, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Yankton? 
bleeding all right, Chester, but he's not dead. Say, looks like an old cart of some kind over there, Mr. Dillon. If it ain't busted, maybe we can hitch it up and carry him back to Dodge. Yeah. Well, let's find that money first, then we'll try it. All right. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. What, Chester? It's kind of bad about Miss Kitty, ain't it? Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most. done all I can for him, man. I... I ain't gonna make it. I never thought I would. Uh, and I don't give up, Yankton. There's always a chance. My partners... They're both dead, ain't they, Marshal? We buried them before we brought you in, mm-hmm. Yankton. Come in. Oh, well, Kitty. I had to come... Hey, here. Hello, Kitty. You got a bullet in me, Kitty. I know. Out on the street there yesterday, I... I had it in mind to ask you something, but... When I got close to you, I... I knew I couldn't. I'm glad, because think, things didn't work out so good. No. I'm sorry, Cole. I'm real sorry. Thank you for coming, Kitty. I won't bother you no more. He's dead. Cover him up. Matt. No, Kitty. You, you, you don't have to explain anything. Yes, yes, I do. I want you to hear too, Doc. I'm listening. You both think I tried to help him, don't you? Well, it sure looks like you did, Kitty. No, no. And I guess I'd have to hear you say it before I'd believe it. I stand with Matt, Kitty. Thanks, Doc. Matt. I'll tell you what, let's forget about it, Kitty, huh? No. No. I want to tell you something about Cole Yankton. 
He's been in California for years. That's why you never heard of him. Well, I've heard of him. I know what he's been doing. I think he came here because he thought I'd help him. But then he did a nice thing, Matt. He didn't ask me to. He didn't make me say no. Well, then I guess he wasn't so bad after all, did he? Cole Yankton. New Orleans. I was just a girl. He was the first man I ever knew. The first grown man. Yankton was a fool, Matt. Yeah. He should have stayed with that girl. Yeah, she's all right, isn't she, Doc? Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. You know, to compliment a Westerner, you, you might say, he'll do to ride the river with. Well, that means that he's courageous and honest. But next week, when a man rides the river, he dies. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M Filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on. Gun smoke.